Do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? Biologics came with some of these recoveries, yeah. Anyone been murdered? These objects were staying completely stationary in Category 4 hurricane winds. I know the exact locations, and, and those locations were provided to the Inspector General. You have mentioned that there's interdimensional p potential. It's tic-tac, like the candy, not tic-tac, like the uh, Chinese Communist uh, app. app. That's correct. Did a human survive those G-forces with known technology today? No. What we saw with four sets of eyes over a five-minute period still there's nothing we have nothing close to it we were primarily seeing dark gray or black cubes inside of a clear sphere and are not wor worthy of further study i'd say that's the biggest understatement <laughs> any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology yes personally have you heard have anyone been murdered that you would think that you know of or have heard of, I guess. I have to be careful asking that question. I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. With intelligent extraterrestrials. Something I can't discuss in public setting. Um, okay, I can't ask when you think this occurred. <laughs> um, if you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay, so, and, and you may or may not be able to answer my last question, and maybe we get into a skiff at the next hearing that we have, but who in the government either, what agency, sub-agency, what contractors, who should be called into the next hearing about UAPs, either in a public setting or even in a private setting, and, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super, thank you. How do you know that these were not our aircraft? Some of the behaviors that we saw in a working area, we would see these objects uh, being at 0.0, .0 Mach, that's zero airspeed, over certain pieces of the ground. So what that means, just like a river, if you throw a bobber in, it's going to float downstream. These objects were staying completely stationary in Category 4 hurricane winds. These same objects would then accelerate to supersonic speeds, 1.1, 1.2 Mach, uh, and they would do so in very erratic and, and quick behaviors that we don't, I don't have an explanation for. Mr. Gresh, finally, do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations, and, and those locations were provided to the Inspector General and some of which to the Intelligence Committees. I actually had the people with the firsthand knowledge um, provide a protected disclosure to the Inspector General. Statement that has been made that was intriguing to me because, and it's intriguing because my, my view has been that we are billions of light years away from any, any other system. And the concept that an alien species that's technologically advanced enough to travel billions of light years gets here and somehow is incompetent enough to not survive Earth or crashes is is something that I find a little bit far-fetched. And with that being said, you have mentioned that there's interdimensional p potential. Could you expound on that? I'll oh, yeah, to answer your first question, and you know, I'm here as a fact witness and expert, but I, I will give you a, a theoretical framework, at least to work off, to kind of espouse uh, crashes. Uh, regardless of uh, you know, your level of sentience, right? You know, planes crash, cars crash. N number of sorties, however high, a small percentage are going to end in you know, mission failure, if you will, as we say in the, in the Air Force. Uh, and then in terms of uh, multidimensionality, that kind of thing, the, the framework uh, that I'm familiar with, for example, is something called the holographic principle. Uh, both, uh, it's, it derives itself from general relativity and uh, quantum mechanics, and that is 
If you want to imagine a 3D object such as yourself casting a shadow onto a 2D surface, uh, that's the holographic principle. So you can be projected, quasi-projected from higher dimensional space to lower dimensional. It's a scientific trope that you can actually cross, literally, as far as I understand, but there's probably guys with PhDs that we could probably but, argue about that. But Mr. Fiverr, I noticed that um, um, in the Tic Tac video, uh, it's Tic Tac like the candy, not Tic Tac like the uh, Chinese communist uh, app. app. That's correct. Yes, sir. I just want to make that, because uh, my daughter uh, corrected me on that and called me a boomer and said, hey, boomer. And I said, no, baby, it's Tic Tac like the candy. You're going to have to just look it up. Your complaint to the intelligence community inspector, you, inspector general, you claim that you believe information is being hidden. What kind of information do you think was hidden and do you think it should remain hidden? Yes, I can speak to that very briefly in an unclassified manner. As you know, the preponderance of my complaint was classified to the intelligence communities. Uh, both uh, material acquisition and exploitation activity, um, also uh, baselining the UAPs but not sharing it with, you know, intelligence professionals that are actually doing step briefs to pilots, uh, that, that kind of information. What, what astonished you the most about the, the flight capabilities of these Tic Tac, very briefly? Uh, the performance, absolute performance. It was. And, and uh, you're you're not aware of any other objects that anybody in the world has in this world that has those capabilities. No, I think it's far beyond actually our material science that we currently possess. Are you aware of any other reconnaissance platforms that have tracked or recorded the Tic Tac's maneuvers? Maybe the NORAD system or any of the others. I am not. Okay. Do you believe that you witnessed an additional object under the water? in relation to your encounter? I will say we did not see an object. There was something there to cause the white water, and when we turned around, it was gone, so there was something there that obviously moved. Okay, it was, it was not the same object, though, that you were, you were looking at, correct? No, we actually joked that the Tic Tac was communicating with something when we came back, and could, because the white water disappeared. Did you experience any of that jamming or interrupting your radar or weapons system? My crew that launched after we landed experienced significant jamming to the APG-73 radar, which was what we had on board, which is a mechanically scanned, very high-end uh, system prior to the APG-79. And yes, it did pretty much everything you could do, range, velocity, aspect, and then it <coughs> spit the lock, and the targeting pod is passive. That's what we were able to get the video on. I'm about to run out of time, but um, are you aware of any of our enemies that have that capability? No. Okay. I've would also like to note for the record that, um, like George Knapp, breaking Area 51, he's the reason I knew about that. And the reason I know about the, the Tic Tacs is, uh, is Leslie Keene um, from New York Times article, and I would encourage everybody to read that. Are there common characteristics to the UAPs that have been cited by different pilots? And can you describe what the convergence of descriptions is? Certainly. Uh, we were primarily seeing dark gray or black cubes inside of a clear sphere. I'm sorry, dark gray or black cubes? Yes, inside yeah. of a clear sphere, where the apex or tips of the cube were touching the inside of that sphere. And that was primarily what was being reported when we were able to gain a visual tally of these objects. And that occurred over almost eight years. And as far as I know, it's still occurring. You know, I'm not like a UFO fanatic. It's not, it's not me. But I will tell you that what we saw with four sets of eyes over a five minute period, still, there's nothing, we have nothing close to it. It was, it was amazing to see. I told my buddy I wanted to fly it, but yeah, it's just an, an incredible technology. When uh, those objects broke uh, the sound barrier, did they make a sonic boom? I was in a jet, you can't hear anything. It's kind of loud in there. Yeah, you, you're not able to actually uh, personally tell within the vehicle. I will say the objects that we were seeing, they were spherical, uh, and they were observed up to Mach 2, uh, which is a very uh, non-aerodynamic shape. What about G-forces? Let's talk about G-forces of those vehicles. Could a human survive those G-forces with known technology today? No. No, not for the acceleration rates that we observed. Okay. What about what they look like? How close did you get? Did you see a seam or a rivet? or a section, and what I mean is, obviously, the jets you're flying have all those things. Did these objects have those? Do you wanna go, Ryan? I didn't, have, I didn't have the detail to be able to tell that. So we got within a half mile of the Tic Tac, which people say that's pretty far, but it, in airplanes, that's actually relatively close. No, it was perfectly white, smooth, no windows, although when we did take the original FLIR video that is out there, when you put it on a big screen, it actually had two little objects that came out of the bottom of it. 
Um, but other than that, no, no windows, no seams, no nothing. Several months ago, my office received a protected disclosure from Eglin Air Force Base indicating that there was a UAP incident that required my attention. I sought a briefing regarding that episode and brought with me Congressman Burchett and Congresswoman Luna. We asked to see any of the evidence that had been taken by flight crew in this endeavor and to observe any radar signature uh, as long as, to, as well as to meet with the flight crew. We were not afforded access to all of the flight crew. And initially, we were not afforded access to images and to radar. Thereafter, we had a bit of a discussion about how authorities flow in the United States of America, and we did see the image. And we did meet with one member of the flight crew who took the image. The image was of something that uh, I am not able to attach to any human capability, either from the United States or from any of our adversaries. And I'm somewhat informed on the matter, having served on the Armed Services Committee for seven years, having served on the committee that oversees DARPA and advanced technologies for several years. Um, when we spoke with the flight crew, and when he showed us the photo that he'd taken, I asked why the video wasn't engaged why we didn't have a FLIR system that worked. Here's what he said. They were out on a test mission that day over the Gulf of Mexico, and when you're on a test mission, you're supposed to have clear airspace, not supposed to be anything that shows up. And they saw a sequence of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb, again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down, he said that his FLIR system malfunctioned, and that he had to manually take this image um, from one of the lenses, and it was not automatic automated uh, in collection, as you would typically see in a test mission. So uh, I guess I'll start with Commander Fravor. In, how should we think about the fact that this craft that was approached by our pilot uh, had the capability of disarming a number of the sensor and collection systems on that craft? Well, I think this goes to that national security side, and you can go back through history of things showing up at certain areas and disabling our capabilities, which is disheartening. And for us, I mean, like I said, it, it completely disabled the radar and the aircraft when it tried to do it, and the only way we could see it is passively, which is how you got that image. So I think that's a, that's a concern on what are these doing, not only how do they operate, but their capabilities inside to do things like this. And, and how should we think about forecraft moving in a very clear formation, equidistant from one another, um, in a diamond, in all of the phenomenon, perhaps, Mr. Grave, that you've analyzed, um, have we ever seen multiple craft in a, in a single formation? I have one particular case, and that was uh, during the gimbal incident. Um, the recording on the AT FLIR system shows a single object that rotates. Um, you hear the pilots refer to a, a fleet of objects that is not visible on the FLIR system, and, and that was something that I witnessed during the debrief as part of the radar data on the situational awareness page. I would like to add, however, Congressman, uh, there's a small, uh, small bit of uh, uh, anger, I would say, I would feel that those pilots are still uh, facing that difficulty in reporting this topic, and they don't have the tools to be able to mitigate this issue. It just goes to show how serious this is and why this is such an important issue for our pilots and for our nation. It was stated explicitly to me by these test pilots that if you have a UAP experience, the best thing you can do for your career is forget it and not tell anyone because any type of reporting, either above the surface or below the surface, uh, does have a perceived consequence to these people, and that is a culture we must change if we want to get to the truth. Based off of your own experience or the data that you've been privy to, is there any indication that these UAPs could be uh, essentially uh, collecting reconnaissance information? Mr. Graves? Yes. Mr. Grush? Fair assessment. Yeah. Mr. That's Fravor? Very possible. Again, in the national security vein, uh, is it possible that these UIPs would be probing our capabilities? Yes or no, Mr. Graves? Yes. Rush? Yes. Fravor? Definitely. 
Is it possible that these UAPs are testing for vulnerabilities in our current systems? Yes. Yes. Possible. Do you feel, based off of your experience and the information that you've been privy to, that these UAP, U, uh, UAPs uh, provide uh, an existential threat to the national security of the United States? Mr. Graves? Potentially. Yes, sir, potentially. Uh, same answer, potentially. Yeah, I'd say Favor. definitely, potentially. Mr. Graves and Fravor, you know, in the event that your encounters had become hostile, would you have, would have, would you have had the capability to defend yourself, your crew, your aircraft? Absolutely not. Sir? No. Is, based off of the information that you've been privy to, is there any indication that these UAPs are interested in our nuclear technology and capabilities? Yes. By external observation, sure, that could be a fair assessment, yeah. Yes. Is there any indication that the Department of Energy is involved in UAP data collection and housing? I don't have an answer. I can't confirm or deny that in a public setting. And no could answer. you do it in a, in a secure setting? Yes. Mr. Fravor. No, I don't know. In the last couple of years, have you had incidences that have caused you to be in fear for your life? for addressing these issues. Yes, personally. Okay. Yeah. I just want everyone to note that he's coming forward in fear of his life to put in perspective if they were really not scared about this information coming out, why would someone be intimidated like that? Mm -hmm. um, to your knowledge, are NHIs working with adversarial foreign governments in either technology exchange programs or back engineering programs? I don't have data on that, I'm not sure. Can you please explain to me in detail the event that occurred at Vandenberg Air Force Base? Certainly. Uh, in the 2003 time frame, uh, a large group of Boeing contractors were operating near one of the launch facilities at Vandenberg Air Force Base when they observed a very large 100-yard sided uh, red square uh, approach the base from the ocean and hover at low altitude over one of the launch facilities. Um, this object remained for about 45 seconds or so before darting off over the mountains. Um, there was a similar event within 24 hours later in the evening. Uh, this was a morning event, uh, I believe 8.45 in the morning. Later in the evening, post-sunset, uh, there were uh, reports of other sightings on base, uh, including some aggressive behaviors. Uh, these objects were approaching some of the security guards at rapid speeds uh, before darting off. Uh, and this is information that was received through one of the uh, witnesses that have approached me at Americans for Safe Aerospace. Was this documented in any official form, whether it was a police blotter? Yes, they had uh, official documentation and records from the event that the witness uh, held over the years. And I'm not going to ask you to do it right now for time reasons, but you'd be able to sketch what was witness, correct? And you've, have you seen that before on any other equipment and or during your flight time? I have not seen what they've described. Um, this object was uh, estimated to be almost the size of a football field. Um, and I have not seen anything personally that large. Okay, and then um, another question on follow-up, referencing the gimbal video go fast incident. Um, can you just clarify, because to our understanding, the footage was actually cut off at a certain point, but what happens at the end of that video, just for those Americans specifically there that are wanting to know about the rest of that footage? Certainly, uh, there was some uncertainty or um, you know, instability with the object, it, it seemed to rock a bit, uh, and that's the last, uh, last I had seen of the video. Much of the data that I would recommend be analyzed would consist of radar data uh, that would pr provide precise kinematics on the object as well as the fleet of objects that were operating nearby. Okay, and follow up, uh, in regards to the reporting procedures that Mr. Garcia had addressed on as well as uh, Representative Bur Burchett, with the FAA, to your understanding, pilots that are seeing this, commercial airline pilots, are they receiving um, cease and desist letters from corporations for coming forward with information in regards to safety for potential air, airline passengers. I have been made privy to uh, conversations with commercial uh, aviators who have received cease and desist orders. So the American public should know that corporations are putting their own reputations on the basic, not the line, but ahead of the safety of the American people. And I think, would you agree with that statement? It appears so. Okay. You know, Mr. Knapp wrote, since 1969, the position our military has been that UFOs pose no threat to national security and are not wor worthy of further study. I'd say that's the biggest understatement of the decade. Um, he also goes on to talk about the dismissive attitude and said odds with what was revealed in documents, reports, and internal memos. It means they're playing one of their final big cards. We've known from a lot of sources and a lot of leaks going back. 
really since the 40s, late 40s, that the program to build the autonomous shadow government that, that the CIA in 1947 was established uh, to, to, to build, basically merge the British Empire and the US Empire to a private corporate empire that is really the globalist empire that doesn't work for America's interest or Christian's interest or populist interest, but works for uh, these these banking um, interests, like we have the former head of the C or former head of the CIA, current head of the CIA, so many of them working at the Carnegie Endowment. I mean, it, it, it really is these interlocking groups that are in control, and now they're in the process of just absorbing what's left. They're playing that final card uh, of the alien invasion, uh, which they can then basically control and it's almost like a new godhead or a new threat that can change the entire global cosmology of how the world operates. So it's a very revolutionary act uh, to be rolling this out now. And the, the so-called Intel uh, operative, uh, Gorsh, notice that he says this is the first time anybody at his level has leaked information. Well, that's not true. Uh, there was Colonel Corso and many others before him that basically put out the same story. So when you hear non-human biologics, that could be a ham sandwich or a cockroach uh, for that matter. I'm not saying there aren't aliens. I'm not saying there isn't some stuff going on. Uh, but so much of this is skunk works, black works, projects uh, that have been operating autonomously again since the late 1940s. And, and so they're getting ready for something really, really big.